Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm going to do a video every day. So make sure you come back again tomorrow. So in today's video I'm going to talk about magnetism in a way. Relays, read switches, read relays. They're all related and it's all to do with magnetism. We're going to talk about magnetism first. Now I mentioned it previously a little bit and we talked about transformers, magnetic flux and how they actually transferred energy from one winding to another. It's all related to that. Basic magnetism thing, there's a magnet in here. There's lots of different types. I mean, I've got a, uh, a bar magnet here as well, which is a neodymium magnet. This more powerful than this one. They have magnetic flux lines, right? So if you look at a image, which I'm going to overlay, of a magnet, which shows the lines around the magnet, which demonstrates where the magnetic flux is, the orientation of the poles and stuff like that. That is very really relevant to reed switches, especially. Because if you don't have the correct orientation or the magnet or it's positioned in the wrong place, the re-switch won't actually work properly. So that's something you need to consider if you're doing re-switches. I'll set something up and see if we can actually demonstrate a re-switch activating off of a magnet. Magnetism has, as I showed on the overlay, those regions where it travels around the magnet, all right? North to South Pole. If you're in the wrong orientation of the magnet, those lines aren't passing through the re-switch or the plate on the relay, because that's another thing, is magnetic fields operating relays and solenoids that's another thing so i put another overlay up which shows a coil an inductor and how the magnetism is generated in that when you pass a current through it that's also very relevant to read relays and relays so as you pass current through a coil it induces a magnetic field in a relay which looks a lot like a bar magnet you put a current through a wire you generate a magnetic field around that wire you put it into a coil you generate a magnetic field around the coil so it sort of extends itself out. Not an easy thing to describe, so hopefully the overlay top of that. Here I have a few different examples. I've got a reed switch here. This is a single pole, double throw. This is an open and closed reed switch. Not so common, but you still you can get them. I've got loads of different ones here. Here's a reed relay, which is based on a 14 pin dip package. I'll put an overlay up over here. There's loads of different pinouts for these particular devices. This is a Hamlin HE721C0500. I'll put an overlay up showing an exact pinout. Basically, we have a coil between these two pins here. Between pin 2 and 6, there's a winding. Between pin 7 and 8, there's actually joined together. That's the common. Pin 1 is the normally closed contact, and pin 14 is normally open contact. And in this case, pin 13 on it used. But in some cases they are. Sometimes they're electromagnetic shield, so it's shielded inside as well, so magnetism doesn't escape and affect anything else around it. Um, this thing's like that anyway. That's that type. Also got this inline type. This is a, another reed relay. This is a much simpler type. It's basically a reed switch with a coil around it in a case. Much simpler. This is like 5 volts rated as well, so you put it in a 5 volt circuit, put 5 volts across the coil, which would be those two there, and these two here, a bit of switch. 12 volt relay, not going to matter that much. It's a single pole double throw relay. But this relay is in lots of different sizes. I mean, you can get them much smaller than this, and you get them much bigger than this. Even like a contactor, which is used on industrial equipment. Big contactors, that's effectively a relay. It's just massive. <laughs> so there's lots of options here. If, you know, a single pole, which means it's only got one pair of contacts. If you don't have much familiarity with what I'm talking about here, I'll explain it. So a single pole is one contact, which has another contact here and here. All right? So a single pole, double throw. This is right, so you've got one connection here, which is the common, and you've got normally open and normally closed connections. Right, so normally closed means you've got a connection point here, like that. When it's de-energised, it's connecting through these pins. When it's energised, this moves over that way, it disconnects from this one, connects onto this one, and that then becomes closed instead. So when it's energised, it switches onto this one. And that is a single pole switch, right, in itself. That's single pole. But you can actually get a bank of these. Sometimes you get a bank of them, and there'll be a bunch of them attached to each other. All right, same circuit duplicated across. You know, it'd be identical. And you get that duplicated across, and then that becomes a two-pole switch. All right, double pole. And then you can get another one. It could be a triple pole or quadruple pole. Depends on what you're using, what you need, and you know. But that's how they work. Let's hook up this reed switch, and we'll demonstrate magnetic field. Hopefully. A few moments later. Right, so I've got my reed switch hooked up. I'm using the normally open contacts, which I mentioned here. And I'm going to demonstrate this with this magnet. The thing with magnets is that they don't just have one position. They're multiple positions. So the magnetic field around them affects how they operate the switch. And I can demonstrate that 
if all goes well, I can show you that. The orientation of switch matters, the orientation of magnet matters. We'll see if we can demonstrate this. Now, if I get this right, there's actually three places where the switch will operate, not one. As I bring the magnet across, there'll be three spots where it'll work, if I can get this right. So let's bring it across. There's one spot there. As I bring it closer, it will actually disappear. See? Now, the magnetic fields are not in the right orientation. So now let's turn the switch back off. Bring it across. Now it's getting back to our kit orientation again. So I've got the lines running this way. Now it'll turn off again. There we go. There's magnetic fields being wrong. Wrong orientation. And as I keep going, it should turn back on. There we go. Here it is. That's a great demonstration of magnetic fields on a magnet affecting a reed switch. I think that's a pretty good demonstration. Now, these are also magnetic, right? So these are ferrous based terminals in them, so they're like ions, so they are magnetic, all right? So if I change contacts to the other one, this one will be the normally closed contact. There we go, it's normally closed, and as I bring it close, it'll turn off instead. So it's the opposite. It demonstrates that part. So this is a reed relay. I'm gonna try activating it with this magnet. See, it does work. Okay, same deal. It's got the poles on it as well. That is a reed switch, as demonstrated. But if you put power on the middle ones, which we're going to try and do, that will activate the coil and close the switch. Right, let's try this, see if this works. There we go, I'm putting 5 volts onto that winding, and that's closing the reed switch. Now, a relay is a little bit different to a reed switch, right? So this is directly activated by magnetism closing contacts together, like this. Relay is a little bit different. There's actually a mechanical mechanism instead. So the magnetism is inducing a magnetic field in a coil. I'll put an overlay up showing a relay example. And the magnetic field induces a magnetic attraction between a plate on a relay, mechanical arm, which then gets pulled down to the relay coil. So it creates a magnetism between those two points. They then pull together, which operates a lever, which then moves the contacts open and shut. So the lever is what moves in the contacts, not magnetism directly. Okay, so it's a, an effect of the magnetism on the mechanical aspect of the relay. They all work the same way. Now, things with relays, probably with reed relays as well, because they've got an inductor, there is a back EMF element to this. Now, what this means is that when you have an inductor and you put a current through it, it builds up a magnetism. And that magnetism, when you disconnect the power, is discharged and it converts back into voltage but it goes back in the opposite direction. So when you have a relay coil, I'll draw this up, or any kind of inductor really, but mostly affects relays to most people, that's the biggest thing. When you energize this with plus and minus, you put power through this coil and that's stored as energy as magnetism within the coil. As I mentioned about the transformers, that's how it transfers it from one coil to the other, it uses magnetism. It stores energy in, in the magnetic flux of the inductor. When you kill the power, that's got to go somewhere, it discharges like a capacitor does, exactly the same. It discharges and spits it back out again. But it actually reverses polarity. So what happens is this becomes positive, this becomes negative. Right? It discharges the opposite direction. Which is why when you see relays or relay circuitry, there's often a diode stuck across them, like that. What happens is when it discharges, the voltage discharges this way, goes through the diode, shorts itself out. Right, it's, it's a little snubber. So what that does is it actually stops that voltage surge from causing damage. This release of energy is not the voltage you put in. It's not five volts or 12 volts, whatever it was that you put into it to energize it in the first place. It's many times greater than that. Depending on the size of the inductance and the mechanism around it, if it's a relay, you've got sometimes it's a moving part as well. You actually add to that as well. It can generate power in itself as things move. That can actually cause a massive voltage spike. It can even be thousands of volts which is why you need a suppression diode called a back EMF diode across the coil, basically in parallel with your power supply. All right? So you think that does nothing, but when it gets a backward spike, it dumps through that diode, and that's what protects your circuitry. Very important to have that, especially on relays. Read relays, maybe you want it too. You probably would do as a matter of course, really, just to be sure. These kinds of relays, you definitely have to have one. So make sure you check out the rest of the playlists. I've got the end of the video here. There's a playlist be down that corner there. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos for beginners and all the other stuff I make, the repairs and what have you. Don't forget to click on like if you like the video and subscribe and click the bell icon if you're new here and you haven't seen my stuff before because you probably find it interesting if you're watching this one and you made it this far. Well done. If you want to see more complex stuff, check out my repair videos. I've got some pretty complex stuff in there. So I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.